Okay, we're going to look today at George O'Keefe, and we're going to look at how we're going to write about this exciting artist. So let's have a little bit of information about George O'Keefe, first of all. George O'Keefe was an American artist who was often referred to as the mother of American modernism. She was best known for a large painting of flowers, skyscrapers and landscapes of New Mexico. George O'Keefe was born November the 15th, 1887, on a dairy farm in Wisconsin. She knew from a young age that she wanted to be an artist and her mother encouraged her to take art lessons. Growing up on a farm helped to fuel George's fascination with nature. This is something she would reflect on throughout her life as a young woman. George studied in Chicago and New York, but grew frustrated that what she was being taught was not allowing her to express her own ideas of what art should look like. Thus, when Georgia discovered abstract artwork that doesn't try to show the world as it really is, but uses shapes and colours in unusual ways to express ideas and emotions, this new way of painting was exciting to Georgia, and she began to experiment with it. She later said, I found I could say things with colour and shapes that I couldn't say in any other way. I had no words for it. In 1915, Georgia made a series of abstract charcoal drawings and sent them to a friend, and took these drawings to the famous photographer Alfred Stieglitz, who displayed them in his art gallery. At first, Georgia was very angry they had done this, but soon they became friends. At this time in history, being a professional artist was not considered an option for women, and Alfred was so impressed with the work, in 1917, he hosted Georgia's first solo art exhibition at his gallery. Georgia and Alfred eventually fell in love in 1924, and they became married, and lived in New York City at the top of one of the tallest skyscrapers at the time. Georgia instantly started painting the city that she saw from her window. She once remarked, you cannot paint New York as it is, but rather as it felt. Georgia used a distinctive style to create dynamic paintings. At this time, Georgia was also began painting close-ups of flowers, and the art that she perhaps is the most famous for, taking small details of flowers and putting them into large canvases, magnifying them, transforming them into something abstract, with bright colours and bold brushstrokes. In 1946, the Museum of Modern Art in New York had an exhibition of Georgia's work, and a few years later, Georgia left New York and went to live in New Mexico, a place she had visited regularly over the past 20 years, but now made home. And she had, as she had painted the city around her, Georgia started painting the desert of New Mexico and the things that she found there, often including bones in her painting. Many people associated bones with death, but Georgia found them beautiful and was fascinated by the small details she could see in them. Just like the flowers, she fell in love with New Mexico's unusual landscape and would spend hours in the hot sun painting. Georgia felt particularly inspired by the paternal mountains where she painted them over and over. And she once said, they're my private mountains. It belongs to me. God told me if I painted it enough, I could have it. Georgia O'Keeffe died in 1986 at the age of 98. She continued to paint into her old age producing more than 2,000 pieces of art in her lifetime. Even when she began to lose her eyesight, she had an assistant to help her by describing what she wanted them to create. I can see what I want to paint. The things that make you want to create are still there. Georgia was a free spirit, and she changed the world of art by pushing creative boundaries and expressing herself in new and distinctive ways. She opened the door for female artists and inspired those who came after her to never be ashamed to see things differently, or to try new things. Georgia herself said it best, I have been absolutely terrified of every moment of my life, and I have never let it keep me from doing a single thing I wanted to do. Okay, we've all looked at the little video now by Georgia O'Keeffe, and we're all familiar with her work and why she chose certain subject matters. So how do we use that to write about the artist and to talk about their work? Well, first of all, let's give a brief history of the artist. So that's my starting point. I would possibly have the title, Georgia O'Keeffe, and then I would write a brief sort of bibliography about her. So we're looking at it and saying, oh, well, where was she born? What year was she born? Uh, when did she start getting interested in art? Okay, now looking back at the video, she was born in Wisconsin, she was uh, on a farm, a mum, you know, which was unusual, a mum really pushed for her to have art lessons and could see she had a talent. She was excited by the nature around her. Now, Georgia Keith is really famous for painting flowers, so living on a farm, I think that's had a massive effect on her. 
Oh, so next thing, she goes off to study art, but she's not happy with the way she's been taught. She doesn't feel she's being taught to express herself. She just thinks she's been taught to draw and paint. And then she has a big discovery. And this is another thing to write about. So, so far you can write about where she was born, when she was born, and that her mother's helped her with art. The next thing is to talk about what was the big thing that excited her. And yes, nature. But then the other thing is discovering abstract art. Okay, so she discovered this. That it was about form. It was about colour. And this really excited her. And from there on, she created these wonderful charcoal pictures. And then she started to paint flowers and the landscape. Okay, and she met her uh, future husband at that point, a photographer, who then gave her a chance of the exhibition, and she was discovered. And from there on, she became quite a famous artist. Now, one of the things I didn't know about George O'Keefe was uh, I'd forgotten all about her landscape paintings. When she lived in New York, these amazing paintings she did of landscapes and sit with the skyscrapers and the cities at night, these wonderful colours, these sort of black backgrounds with these sort of neon lights uh, describing the cityscape around her. Um, during this time, she travelled backwards and forth to Mexico, and she was still uh, forming probably her most famous works while well, these close-ups of flowers that she really became famous of. But when she travelled back to Mexico and stayed there and uh, discovered the, the landscape of New Mexico, she really got interested in not just flowers in the landscape, but skulls within that landscape. And she often combined the skulls and the landscape together to create the work. So we can start looking at that. What was exciting about her work? Now she's gone from abstract expressionism, which was all about just shape and colour, to putting these objects in the landscapes, like skulls, or painting the landscapes, or zooming close in on a flower, so close in that we can't really see it's a flower anymore. It's just an abstract shape, the kind of the... Uh, the pollen of the flower and the stalks of the flower in there and the leaves just blossom out. So her work is all about zooming in on detail. And this is what she loved about skulls. She loved the details. She thought they were beautiful. Many people thought they were, you know, scary and about death. She just saw the beauty in the shapes, the abstract shapes and the abstract colour of them. Now you can also look at the landscape. She, she very taken by the paternal mountains. And that appeared in many of her works throughout the remainder of her later life. And she continued drawing it. I particularly love that quote that she says that uh, she made a deal with God that if she painted it enough, she could own it. I love that. I think it's a beautiful idea. So, for you, write a bit of history. Who was the artist? Where were they born? Uh, what type of work did they produce? Okay. Um, then talk about this the discovery of expressionism, abstract expressionism and abstract art and how she just got loved the colours and loved the shapes and then talk about her art which was the close-up of flowers at this point I would choose one of her works of art draw it, colour it in, draw it as best you can, copy it, colour it in and then describe it describe what the shape of the flower looks like or the shape of the skull looks like or the, the landscape or the skyscraper that you've seen describe what it looks like talk about the colors are they bright are they dull uh, can you see what it is instantly or is it a little bit abstract okay talk about the form of it talk about the colors yeah say what you see okay it's really important sometimes in art that we just describe it to the viewer your description might be slightly different to mine but we all need to find language that interprets what we see. Is the colour bold? Is the shape bold? Is the line of it soft and gentle or is it really strong? Can you see the brush marks on the, uh, on the canvas? Or is it smooth and perfect? Is it um, random colours or is there a smooth tone going from dark to light in the paint and the colour? Look for all these things and think how you can describe it. And then really importantly, say what you like or dislike about it. If you don't like the work, it's important that you talk about it. I don't want to just hear, oh, I don't like it. It's, it's boring. Tell me why you don't like it. And don't just say, because the colours are nice. Because what you think are nice colours, I might think are awful. Okay, so that's subjective. And what I mean by subjective means is it's a matter of opinion. If you think the colours are nice... Tell me why you think they're nice. They're nice because they remind you of a summer's day. They're nice because they're dark and exciting and bright. And it reminds you of seeing neon signs in a city. Tell me why you think they're nice colours. 
or good colours or interesting or exciting or bold. Choose your words. Think about exciting or interesting words. Think about different words to describe the things you see. If you really like the work, tell me what your opinion on that. If you don't like it, tell me why you don't like it. Talk about these things. Okay. So that's uh, where we need to be. We need to look at the history. Tell me about the artist. Tell me a little bit about her work. Copy one of her paintings. Describe it to me as if maybe I was on the telephone or I can't see for whatever reason. And you need to tell me what this piece of artwork looks like. And tell me whether you like it or not. And tell me why you like it. Or tell me why you don't like it. And I think once you've done that, you should have a good page full of writing. And that'll be a really nice start to writing about an artist. I would ask if you've got time, present it nicely. If you're doing this on paper, maybe put a little wash or colour pencils of colours in the background that you see, you've see you seen in Georgie O'Keeffe's work. Or paint it in. Or if you're doing it on a sway, maybe make the background one of her flowers or one of her images and then do the text over the top of it. If I was writing about this artist, I'd probably try to include, and I was um, doing it on a computer or I had access to it, I would probably print out or add in my sway an image of the artist, a photograph of her, maybe when she was young or when she was old, it wouldn't matter, to show what this artist looked like. Put that up with maybe the history and the bibliography of the artist, okay? And then show a picture of the artist's work, copy it. It's really important you try and draw their work and try and colour it in. Then describe it, say what you like, say what you dislike, okay, give your opinion, okay, because opinion is important, okay, we, I don't want to see cut and paste, I don't want to see you just grabbing something from Wikipedia and cutting the history of the artist down, I want you to read a website or read a book, I'll make notes from this video you've seen, and then you select what you think the important facts say about this artist and what her achievements are, then copy one of their pictures, then describe it, Say what you like about it or what you don't like about it. Give your opinion. Okay, I hope you understand this and I hope you understand the tasks ahead and good luck. Okay, can't wait to see what you write. Um, if you do it on paper, that's fine, bring it in. I would like you to take photographs of it and maybe add it uh, to your sway. Okay, if you do it on sway, that's absolutely fine as well. Just remember to share it with me. Okay, you should already have shared your sway with me from the previous work we've done. Okay, I like it all kept in one sway. Don't create a new sway for this. This is the continuous work that you've done previously. Okay, keep it all in one sway. So you've got all your terms work in one document. Okay, good luck guys and speak to you soon.